wait for a couple more people to join and then we'll bring in my friend Maggie you all know Maggie she is a wonderful wonderful person we've done a lot of stories with her on the show she is from personal euphoria she has some fitness tips that we should keep in mind but also tips for our mental health as well we tend to get really stressed out I'm sure a lot of you feel that way so she has some ideas and so does my phone apparently about ways that we can kind of get our lives in check right now when so much seems to be out of balance and out of whack so let's bring her in Here we go. Hi. Hi, Taylor. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. It's so great to see you once again because I'm never prepared. I'm going to turn up my volume just a little bit so I can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, happy Tuesday. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to since, what is this, like week eight, nine of quarantine? I can't keep track. Yeah, I mean, we basically, as a company, are completely virtual now. So all our classes are online. And it, that's been a learning curve for us to find that. But I am grateful that I'm in a line of work where that's an option, you know. And so I still get to see my clients, at, like Brady Bunch style, on Zoom, you know. But yeah, so it's a little bit different. Been... I miss seeing people in person. But I like that we can still get people to keep moving and work out and give them some sense of normalcy with all of this right now. And, and your whole motto is to keep moving. And it's so important, especially right now when we are stuck at home and, and not staying up to date with our normal routine. So if people have uh, never seen you on our show before, if they haven't, they're missing out. Uh, tell us a little bit about what Personal Euphoria is, why you started this brand, and some of the things that you're able to provide your clients. Yeah, so uh, my company is personal euphoria we're a fitness and wellness business and we're based out of weathersfield connecticut since 2007 but we normally operate across the greater hartford area and so prior to all of this we teach a variety of fitness classes through parks and recs and through local companies and things like that like we go into businesses on their lunch breaks and we also do a series of talks and workshops like workshops for low back pain workshops for foot pain um and when everything happened here, one of the businesses that we work for regularly, they asked if I would create a talk um, specifically, because I, I do a lot of lunch and learns or yeah. um, conference talks. They said, will you do a talk on movement for stress reduction and kind of mm -hmm. talk to our staff about that? So that's kind of where this particular topic evolved from. I mean, it's not new information that movement or breath work can help reduce stress, mm -hmm. but I think... A lot of us, especially when life is suddenly chaotic and we're ripped up from our normal routine, we don't think of that, especially mm -hmm. if we're not regularly someone who moves. And three quarters of adults don't exercise yeah. regularly. So it's not what they think of to go to, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, I think if anything, this probably draws attention to the fact that so many of us don't move or maybe don't make as much time to have physical activity in our lives. Like, I, I think I worked out like a good-ish amount, well, emphasis on the ish before we went into, uh, you know, before we started all staying home. But now, especially because I'm working in one place all day long, like there are times when I don't leave my desk or my desk, my dining room table, but I don't leave. And if the only time I'm getting up is to like walk to the kitchen, like we know that we're in trouble here. So it's important to do something, even if it's small, right? Yeah, I think especially if it's new to you, because that is an issue many people have too, is it's like, oh, I'm supposed to work out, so I'm going to go and I'm going to take this challenging yeah. class. And then we push so hard, we, we get injured. And definitely you don't want to do that now, because it's just yeah. like, going to add to the frustration you're dealing with. But yeah, I mean... I mean, obviously, I, I love if people come to fitness classes. I like that. But you don't need to pay a penny. You could take a walk, and you could start with a 10-minute walk. And then not only are you getting mm -hmm. movement in, but you're getting outside. You're getting fresh air. I know some people are nervous about that right now. But most of the people, like experts will tell you, going outside and walking is still beneficial. Like, it's much better right. than sort of staying trapped in your house. So that fresh air and sunlight is really important for our health 
walking just at a comfortable pace. You, you can put on headphones, you can call mm -hmm. a friend so you can feel like that's time with someone. And if you're stuck on a project or you're just feeling frustrated, that is super helpful as well. Mm -hmm. um, so at the simplest level, all you need to do is start to get to walk a minimum of 10 miles a day and build up from there. Okay. Now, today you are going to be chatting with us a little bit about gentle breathing exercises. So what are some of those tips that you might have for people who, who may be listening and may feel really stressed out right now? Because I know I do. <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting, too. I think we experience like all different types of stress, right? We can be in like... Uh, flight mode where we just want to curl in a ball and pretend this isn't happening and you can be on like go mode like in fight mode like I I'm on I'm doing it right and yep so sometimes if I'm in like fight mode and I'm go 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 and someone's like you need to chill out and breathe <laughs> I'd want to rip their head off so yep. we have to know like when breathing can work for us and when it might not be the best choice like maybe mm -hmm. we need to take that walk burn off that new nervous energy yes. and then breathe um but yeah, breathing is definitely a tool to give us a sense of control. And they, they don't understand the mechanism of, enti of it entirely. But there is study after study that shows breathing reduces stress. Mm -hmm. And it also can increase our attention span. So if you're feeling because of that stress, like haphazard, you're making stupid mistakes, like yeah. putting, putting the cereal in the fridge and the milk in the cupboard, those kinds of mistakes, mm -hmm. breathing can actually help with that too. I think it refocuses us. But my concern is I always feel like when we talk about breathing exercises, people sometimes get turned off, they shut down, they feel like they can't breathe. Yeah. So I always like to start with, if you are alive, if you're watching this, you nail breathing. Like, You're doing well. Yeah. 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 You've got part, like the basics down. Yeah. But if you can control your breath and do different breath patterns, you can use that as a tool. Again, it is very specific types of breathing that seems to cause the stress reduction mm -hmm. and increase the attention span. It's yeah. not just sitting and breathing that does that. It's what we call diaphragmatic breathing. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll back up a little bit so that okay. you can see me, but people breathe in all different ways. And a lot of times as we get older, we take a very shallow breath just into our chest. Yeah. But if you've ever seen a baby breathe, you see how their whole stomach yes. expands and rises. So that baby is just naturally doing a diaphragmatic breath. And that would be our goal is to make sure we get movement in the lower ribs when we okay. breathe. And so there's all different ways to do that. But I would suggest starting with just so you have like some tactile, like being able to touch something is helpful. So you could put your hands or a pillow on your stomach. Okay. And try to let your stomach inflate when you inhale like a balloon. But You've got to be cautious because you can just like move your stomach yeah. in and out. I was like, I'm doing right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, so you can just move your muscles. You don't have to have it in sync with the breathing. Yeah. But try to let the breath be what fills you up so that as that breath comes deeper into your lungs, your stomach expands. And then as you exhale, you actively pull your belly button to your spine and you yep. blow all the air out. And some women are very hesitant to do this. We don't like to, like, let our stomach go. We work no. so hard to do that, <laughs> right? Um, but that, that's one of the perks of the pandemic. No one can see you. No one can see you. See, I'm doing it right now. Nobody knows. Yes. <laughs> yep. And that kind of breath is going to be really helpful. In fact, they have found that... Um, so there was one study that basically said if you just sat for 15 minutes and kind of counted your breath, on average, people took about 17 breaths a minute. Mm -hmm. And when you did diaphragmatic breathing, on average, people took four breaths per minute. So it's a much slower breath. If you think of that, right, that's yeah. like seven second inhale, seven second exhale, four times. So you're taking in more air and you are expanding and letting all the muscles move. Right. So you can think of that coming from your belly. And usually yes. that's the easiest place for people to breathe diaphragmatically. Mm -hmm. Another place is if you put your fingers on your bottom ribs and you can hold here or sometimes people like kind of like you're giving yourself a hug, but you want to yep. feel your lowest ribs. Can you actually get movement there? And that's a place that tends to be really restricted for people. Yeah. So if you can breathe and the ribs expand and exhale, 
I don't know if you can see the movement I'm getting. You can see it a little bit, yeah. And it's slight, but, but what kind of benefit do you think that adds by making sure that ev everything is expanding when you're... There we go. Well, we can breathe into our stomach and our ribs cannot move much and if your ribs are tight and mm -hmm. restricted it will decrease movement in your spine and even shoulder and neck pain can be tied to not having your proper movement in your rib cage and then again yeah. you kind of can't get fully relaxed something's always tight and compressing you so the ability to let that release and engage and one of the cues i give is you almost imagine your ribs flaring out like an umbrella opening and then closing back yeah. down that's sort of the visual and your diaphragm is all connected there so if you can get movement there the diaphragm is definitely getting involved in that pumping action yeah. and one of the as they do more science to figure out why this is related to stress one of the things that they found is that our postural muscles or what people think of our core muscles mm. are connected to the brain by many of the same nerves that connect to our adrenal glands, which are the glands that tell us whether or not to be stressed. Okay. So they think our ability to move both through breath and moving the spine in different directions, that gentle movements and breath work signal to the brain that it's okay to de-stress because mm -hmm. movement of these muscles is so intricately connected by an uncountable amount of nerves running between the brain and the adrenals. Do you uh, think it, into that too? Because like, when we, I know for me, like when I get stressed and it's like things start piling up and piling up, like my, my anxiety builds and I, cause I feel like I'm almost running like a million miles a minute. Do you think that by just stopping and taking a second to focus on breath, that it's the action of just like, like stopping your body and just focusing on one thing. Do you think that also just like, just to take a moment to like stop? I don't know. I'm not really explaining it well, but do you think that helps in terms of like when people get really anxious and, and things start I to absolutely assume that's a level of it, right? Like that would be meditation, right? Like taking time to focus, quiet your mind mm -hmm. and, and certainly stopping. And I know less about the science of meditation because what I study is the movement component. So right. I'm always looking for research studies on that regard. Yeah. But yeah, I do think there is something to be like, I can tell I'm in a frenzy. So yeah. I'm going to like stop and control it and try to focus. Mm -hmm. And for me, I really struggle with meditation. Like anytime I'm I, do. I can't turn my brain off. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. And you know, I'll look at the clock and I'll be like, 30 seconds, how could it be so, like, it, it's yeah. ludicrous how hard it is for me. Yeah. But to me, I'm, I, sh I find it easier to do a moving meditation. So counting the breath and mm -hmm. getting into a rhythm with that or small moves like going in and out of a cat stretch. Yeah. But again, we are all different and they don't know enough. So while I have no doubt meditation is good and I should practice it, it's never been a tool I can go to because it, mm -hmm. I don't practice it enough and it doesn't work for me, but I can go to movement and that seems to calm me down. And is that because it's the way I'm built and everyone needs a different tool yeah. or is, is it just that I suck at meditation, which would be, <laughs> which would be fair. It's <laughs> somewhere in between. But I also think it's cool how you're kind of redefining like what movement means, because I think when you, people hear movement, they're like, that means I need to like run a mile, right? So I think it's important to make that distinction that that movement is, is much broader in definition than people realize. Yeah, I mean, I do think, listen again, running can be that tool. If you need mm -hmm. to burn off energy, it can be a great stress reliever. But it is, it is just thinking about how we position ourselves. In fact, the study that linked um, that our postural muscles are tied in with stress, yeah indicated that just thinking about our posture and how we hold ourselves might be connected. Because mm -hmm. if you're at a desk all day, right, and this is Me. like your posture, yep. you're not necessarily depressed. You might not even hate your job. You just get stuck here. But if, if that's what you're holding all day, the muscles are signaling to the brain. She's, she's like trying, she's trying to, she's afraid. She's getting into that right. curling, <laughs> fetal position. Yeah. It's constantly telling you something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you can hold good posture, then the body is constantly signaling, we're okay, everything's exactly. safe, we can hold ourselves fine. And it's just interesting 
that there might be science that shows that that's relevant, you know? Because we always know kind of like the clothes make the man. I say the posture makes the person. Yeah. If you're kind of like this, you feel like you're in a slump. And if you're like this, you're like on guard, you know? Exactly. And, and it changes that your balance mind. is hard. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk a little bit more before we go, um, maybe about some easy, gentle core movements that we can all do while we're stuck at home. Absolutely. And so these are all things you can do them standing or sitting. Like if you're, if you don't have time to get up from your desk, but you need a break, you want to think of moving the spine in every direction it can move. Okay. So it can bend side to side and you can do a little gentle side bend and you would put your mm -hmm. hand like on the edge of your chair or the armchair. Yeah. So they just have a little resistance and you just go side to side or a little support. And you go as far as you want. And yep. when you side bend, try not to let your butt come with you. So you're staying heavy on both butt cheeks. Ooh, I felt that one. <laughs> and one side might feel tighter than the other. Yep. And you can also incorporate, you can move side bend and then try to breathe into where you already feel that stretch. Okay. And now you're going to get a deeper stretch and movement from the inside out. And you're yep. also working the breath. Then we also can bend forward and back. So sure. you would want to round forward, which is usually more comfortable for people. Mm -hmm. And then you'd want to not just go to tall, but lift a little from the breastbone and let your head bend, your chin lift a little. And okay. it's not huge. You're not trying to arch from the back. It's right. small. And you can round forward and then lift, go past tall and lift that breastbone. This is the toughest move for most people yes. is to get that breastbone to lift. So if it feels uncomfortable, recognize that that can be small as well. Yeah. And just like the side bend, you can hold and breathe in either of those mm -hmm. positions. Sometimes rounding forward makes it easier for people to get movement in those lower ribs that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So you can play with that. And then, of course, you want to twist. And this is the one that for most people feels the best. Yep. But if you're sitting in your desk chair, you could do arms out and you're going to keep one hand pointing forward and you're going to twist the other and look over your back shoulder. And of course, I hit a wall, but yeah. <laughs> the wall's in your way. And then you would do side to side. And so if the wall's in your That's way, better. you can bend that back arm just so it doesn't hit that wall. This is how out of shape I am right now, though. Like, all of this hurts, which is not a good thing. <laughs> but again, I think the first step is you even being aware of that, right? If someone yeah. is moving, they're not even aware that movement could be helpful. Or they go, wow, I didn't realize how stiff I was. Because mm -hmm. I've been focused on how to get my work done in this new world. Or how to teach yeah. my kids in homeschool then. There's so much distraction that we don't take a moment to, like, care for ourselves for three simple stretches, right? right? Mm-hmm. These were, and it oh, it can be life changing because yeah. it's so, I always say like, if there was a pill that did what movement did, everybody would want that pill. Oh yeah. Yep. It is proven to reduce stress, make us feel better about ourselves, reduce depression, reduce anxiety. Now, I don't care if you no, don't normally suffer from those things. We all are dealing with that right now. Oh, absolutely. You know, I keep laughing. I keep saying to my friends, oh, I'm fine. Or they say I'm fine. And in the next breath, we're like, but we're not sleeping. <laughs> so yeah. Because yeah. we're stressed, you mm -hmm. know? And that's normal. <laughs> it's normal. But, like, I think what is so important is, like, yesterday in particular, I, had, I spent a lot of time here. I got up, and I don't even know what I did, but I think I just, like, moved side to side. And I, like, you know, held my legs up just for a little bit. And, like, I instantly felt better. So there's something to be said for just like taking a small amount of time, maybe doing some of those like simple core exercises. You don't even have to stand up. So that's just, I think it just goes to show you the power of movement and what it could do obviously for your physical health, but for your mental health too. It's huge. And your point is exactly right. Like starting your day with a little movement. Mm -hmm. Think of any other animal. Like if you have a dog or a cat and they get up and they kind of stretch and move. A huge before, stretch. Yeah. yeah before they go about their day. We need that too. We get mm -hmm. stiff after sleeping. So like, it, this is the other thing. People like to be directed in movement, but if yeah. you just like stretch and wiggle and make it up yourself, I always say the body knows what it needs. It'll move yes. you in a way that eventually feels good if you're willing to explore. And it's another perk of the pandemic. No one can see you so you can, it doesn't have to look good or do whatever you want. Sleep. Let it out. That movement you just did is exactly what I try to get people comfortable with doing. <laughs>
Now, if people are just joining in and they want really quickly um, some fast tips for both gentle breathing exercises and then the easy gentle core movements, what are they? So the easy gentle core movements, just remember, bend the spine in every direction, side to side, front to back, and rotate. And then you'll have hit all those postural muscles, right? Yeah. For breathing, go easy on yourself. Try not to judge it. If it doesn't come right away, you can practice again, but use tactile cueing. Touching yourself where you want the breath to go is usually helpful for people. So let your hands or some other object be a guide for you to try to practice getting that breath in there. And slow down the breath. See if you can do four breaths in one minute. Put on a timer and slow it down. And if people want more information about personal euphoria, where can they go? So, yep, they can find us um, at personaleuphoria.com, and there they can find everything from our Facebook and Instagram apps to our virtual classes to uh, how to book one of our corporate talks, if that's something they're interested in. Lots of ways to help, help us keep you keep moving. <laughs> I love that. Well, Maggie, thank you so much for your time. As always, we appreciate it. The tips are so helpful. And I feel like as soon as this is over, I'm literally going to go stand up and like breathe a little bit and then do a bunch of exercises just so I can feel like I did something today and I moved a little bit. <laughs> that makes me happier than you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We, um, we will chat with you soon. But if, again, if people want more information about you, head over to Personal Euphoria, guys. We've worked with Maggie on a number of stories now. She also does kids' exercises as well. So if you want to get your kids moving, she's got some great, like, Zoom workouts that they can do. Um, and I'm sure the family can get involved with all of that as well. But Personal Euphoria, Maggie Downey, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Taylor. Have a great day. You too. Awesome love Maggie. She's fantastic. But guys, just remember those simple tips can help you to feel better, both physically and mentally. And I think we all need that right now. Uh, so if you want to look back on some of those tips, make sure to watch this Instagram live as soon as it's over and I post it and have a great day. If you are sitting down for a while, like I usually do, lift your posture up a little bit or just get up for a couple seconds, stretch it out, shake it out, have a dance party, breathe a little bit, do what you got to do. Uh, to help yourself move forward. But have a great day. Uh, make sure to tune in tomorrow because we'll have another guest. I'm not sure if we're going to be live on Facebook or Instagram, but stay tuned to find out. So see you guys tomorrow.